Hello and welcome to today's Bible reading and devotional time for Saturday, August 3rd, 2024. Hope the weekend's getting off to a good start for you. And before we go any further, make it a great start by hitting that subscribe bar and then the notification bell when it comes up so you can be notified when content is added to the channel. Comment on these videos, like, share, give them a thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, you know all that. So today we are in Luke chapter 5, uh, beginning in verse 16. Uh, as we continue our 102 days of reading through Luke and Acts, this is day 12. And so we will get it going here. Let me get over here to my text. Let me do it just this mic just a little. Okay, Luke chapter 5. We'll finish out the chapter today. Now it happened, verse 17, it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by, uh, sitting by who had come out from every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, teachers of the law. Yeah, thank you, lawyers, but I digress. Uh, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went out on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the, tile, the tiling in the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said to them, uh, said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, uh, Who is this that speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise and take up your bed and go to your house. And immediately he arose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen some strange things today. Now, whenever Luke uh, reports uh, what someone's thinking, uh, usually some kind of instruction follows. Uh, and in this case, it was a two-by-four upside the head for the Pharisees uh, because of their not believing, not accepting uh, Jesus as the Messiah, because they, they have a question here that's a dilemma for them, and that is uh, declaring sins are forgiven or telling someone to get up and walk, which is easier. Now, Jesus said, okay, your sins are forgiven. Anybody can say that, but how do you see that? That's not something tangible that you can see or, or touch, like this microphone. I'm not going to make a lot of noise probably if I touch it too hard but these are things you can see so how do you show okay so he said he's forgiven sins that's blasphemy only god can do that all right i'm gonna fix that right now uh all right man take up your bed arise go home okay takes it goes home whoa whoa how'd that happen so he's acting now and this is this is the, the thing to remember jesus is doing this to show his authority by saying, take up your bed and walk, he is showing he, he just backed up his authority to forgive sins. Because yeah, it, that is something you can see, that he does have the healing power. He, uh, there's something obviously different about this guy. And so this is, he's doing the, the started with the easy thing and then went to doing the harder thing. Uh, in chapter 5, uh, verse 27 here, we see there that Jesus in Jesus' ministry, when he reaches out to the edge of society, uh, ch uh, chapter, or chapter 5, 12 to 26, those who were suffering physical limitations were reached out to because of uh, the healing of the man. And now we're coming into uh, verse 27, where he is going to, we're going to see the, the pattern of reaching out to those on the edge. Today, I guess we call them marginalized. But he's going to go and reach out now to Matthew, also known as Levi. After these things, verse 27, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. 
So he left all, rose up, and followed him. Now, I don't think Levi or Matthew, whichever name you want to use, was did that blindly. Okay, I don't think he was sitting there doing his job collecting taxes. Jesus walks by, hey, follow me. Okay. I think he knew something about Jesus. I think any all the disciples, by the time Jesus called them, they'd at least heard of him. It wasn't like this stranger just walking by and they quit what they were doing and went to follow him. Another thing to understand is every disciple that Jesus called, the ones that we have the record of, they were workers. He called fishermen. They were tending their nets. Here he calls Matthew. Matthew's in the office putting in a day's work. He didn't go and call people sitting on the couch watching TV or playing with uh, puzzles or whatever they did in those days when they were just uh, had, had any kind of free time. So the idea of being a Christian, oh, I just kind of go to church and that's it. No, that's not the idea. You've missed it completely. He expects us to be working. You know, he expects us, and as part of working, we need to be talking to people about Jesus. Big reason why the church is declining, why Christianity is on the decline, because Christians are bored with it. We're not excited. We'll go into church. We'll see all the lights and the bands and the steam and the smoke and fog and whatever is going on. We'll get a high, kind of like we do with a cup of coffee. And then we go out and a couple hours later, it crash, boom, we're done. Or maybe sometime Monday, boom, we're done. We're right back doing what we used to do. We're not excited about our Christianity. We're not showing any joy. Folks, we got to pick up our game. You know, as there, there are people out there that are searching. And the Lord's Church, we've got the, the truth that they need. Not in the, you're not going to find it in a denomination. You're certainly not going to find it in progressive Christianity, what's called progressive Christianity. So we need to take them the truth of the gospel, that, that Jesus will forgive sins, that Jesus will accept them. It doesn't matter what the, what they're where, where they are right now. Jesus will take them. But if you're whatever sin you've got going on in your life, it's got to stop. That's just it. Period. Full stop. We do not condone sin. We do not affirm it. We go with what the scriptures say. Okay, rant over. That wasn't really a rant. That was just telling it like it is. 29, verse 29, then Levi gave him a great feast in his own house, and there were a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with them, and the scribes and the Pharisees complained against his disciples, saying, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Now notice, tax collectors and sinners, they, the tax collectors were so badly thought of, they had their own category of, of uh, sinner, or were in their own category, let's put it that way. And Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to... Re, what's that word? Repentance! Yeah, we all need to repent. We're all sinners and have fallen short of the glory of God. We all need uh, to repent. And notice too, those who are well have no need of a physician, Reminds me of people when I approach them about the gospel. Well, and I, I, I just got the yeah. I'll be back to church, or yeah, I'll get into church. But I got some stuff I need to work out in my life. Okay, so uh, tomorrow or Monday morning when I get up, if I'm feeling good, I'm going to call the doctor. Hey, doc, I need an appointment. Or my car, you know, it's running real smooth, so I'm going to take it to the mechanic. Doesn't make any sense, does it? It's when I get up in the morning, I'm not feeling real well. I'm just not hitting on all cylinders. Yeah, um, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the doctor a call and see about an appointment. You know, the car's making that knocking noise when I, when I start it up, and it's, got, it, it, it's missing on the cylinders and things. Yeah, I better get it into the mechanic. See, Jesus didn't come for those who were already righteous, which uh, nobody is. But there are the Pharisees, the scribes, and those folks who think they are righteous. But he's come to call the sinner. He's come to call you and me to repentance. And today we need to call people to repentance. Repentance is necessary uh, to, to, to convert to Christ. Don't let anybody ever tell you, that, oh, no, repentance isn't necessary. Your work salvation. No, Jesus right here said it. And at the end of Luke, he's going to say, uh, the uh, that he came to suffer and to die so that repentance 
and remission of sins could be preached beginning in Jerusalem. Okay? And then on the day of Pentecost, Peter said, repent, change your life, and be immersed to have your sins forgiven. That's what he said. Don't argue with me. Argue with Peter if you, if you don't like that. Uh, if you don't like that. Simple as that. Uh, now, verse 33. Then they said to him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise those of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink? But he said to them, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away and from uh, to be taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. Then he spoke to them, uh, spoke a parable to them. Now, uh, no one puts a piece of, from a new garment on an old one, otherwise the new makes a tear. And also, the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. No one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled, and the wineskins will be ruined. But the new wine must be put into new wineskins, and both are preserved. No one, having drunk old wine, immediately desires new, for he says the old is better. Now, uh, the, Jesus, I think, it does expect us to fast from time to time. Uh, he said, when you fast, don't be like the Pharisees, as back in Matthew, don't be like the Pharisees and uh, make a big deal about it and look sad and put ash on, a, a, ash on your face and that sort of thing. Okay, just do it privately or, or do it without mentioning it. Now, it's been a while since I have fasted. Uh, hmm, I'm trying to think when it was. I honestly couldn't tell you when it was. Uh, but the first time I, I took part in a fast was the 1984 presidential election. A group of us on campus, let's see, the election was Tuesday, so Monday night we all met for supper, and uh, that was it. We fasted until supper time Tuesday night uh in in honor of the election and to pray about the election and that was the year of reagan's biggest landslide since uh i think nixon's uh carried 49 states anyway uh and from time to time i have fasted when there is a a big decision to make and you know fasting does have some benefit now now not everybody can fast there are people with health conditions who just simply can't do it and that's okay but if you are able to physically, uh, once in a while, uh, it is a good idea. And there are supposedly some physical benefits. Gives your body a chance to clean out all the preservatives and stuff in the food we eat. But it's also typically in religious contexts. And, and I think Muslims do fast during Ramadan. And other religions will have it in there for whatever reason. But it does give you an opportunity. You can sit. You're not thinking about physical. and Don't think about of uh, food and eating in the physical body and concentrate on the mental and concentrate on the on the spiritual and go on about your business usually if i am going to fast i plan it maybe a couple of days out so because it does take some mental work to get yourself going for that fast and i generally try to do it 24 hours i'll usually have a, a meal have supper and then after that, okay, no more until 5 o'clock or 6 or 7, whatever time I eat today, I'll go 24 hours. Now, there are some that'll do it maybe 12. And, and sometimes those are people who have medical conditions like diabetes and they can't go 24 hours. Okay. But the, uh, that's the idea. But notice here that the Pharisees are really asking more of this to try and trip them up like they usually are. So, oh, and I forgot this. Let me go over and get back here to the PowerPoint for just a second. I forgot to do this. Here's some artist depiction of Jesus and the man being lowered through the roof. Now, we used to, we, we typically think of houses like we have today, but in those days, the houses were probably not much taller, uh, the average house. If you notice, the ceilings really aren't that high here. And they were typically not as high in the ceilings as we are. They didn't have the A-frame sloped roofs like a lot of ours do now. A lot of times they were flat roofs, so they couldn't get in. And sometimes there were stairs leading up to the roof. So they would just come up, pull the planks, and lower the man in. Here's another depiction of him. Uh, and uh, there is this one. 
Uh, now, we don't know what Jesus looked like, okay? He wasn't black like an African. He was not white like a European from, you know, Oslo or something. He would have looked like any Hebrew male uh, at the time. So, a little darker skin than most of uh, whites. Uh, probably had black hair. Uh, probably had a beard. But, uh, you know, the what, long-haired, blonde, blue-eyed, no, that wasn't it. But this isn't it either. But different cultures, since we don't have a description of Jesus... Uh, different cultures are going to portray him looking like like themselves a lot of the times. Now, the other thing is that uh, as far as what he looked like, I, I, there's a reason why I think we don't have a description. That is simply because God doesn't want us to be making idols, doesn't want us making pictures and then worshiping down at the picture. He doesn't want that. Idolatry is and making graven images is not a lot. Here's one more uh, depiction of Jesus and this man. I, I thought this was sort of comical because here's the guys up here luring him in. Now look at the guy here. Kind of looks to me like they might have dropped him. Uh, just the way he's kind of sitting there uh, in, in uh, we used to call it like the crab walk uh, where we walk backwards, uh, hands and legs like that. But but it looks to me like he he's been dropped here. I I don't know, I don't know who did this painting or uh, you know if that's their thought. But that that's the way it looked to me. Okay, that is going to wrap it up for today. We'll close out as we usually do by going to God in prayer. And since I don't do the Bible reading and devotional on Sunday, it's too much going on a lot of times to be able to get it recorded. We'll have a prayer for Saturday and for Sunday. Uh, particularly for tomorrow, we want to pray about our assemblies, for them to be attended, for people to learn. And uh, for Saturday, we want to pray for the afflicted, the homeless. Uh, there's an opportunity in my community to uh, keep some jobs here and then possibly add another 30 or so jobs. It may not sound like a lot, but we just lost 500, almost 600 jobs here. So but we, we'll take it where we can get it. And for the sick and, and that sort of thing. So let's go to God in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you for all that you have provided. And we want to pray, Lord, for those today who are dealing with things like uh, uh, sickness and health issues. We pray for those, Lord, in hospitals. Help doctors and nurses to make the, the right call in treating and diagnosing and for the families. We want to pray for their comfort and help them when they've got tough decisions to made, I know some of those people here, in, uh, a couple in nursing homes. One of them has the possibility to go home, and I pray that that will happen as well. And for our uh, people here, our congregation here, Lord, those who are sick, uh, those who are dealing with heart issues, and and uh, other, pray for your healing and your comforting hand on them. We pray for those, Lord, who are jobless to help them find employment. And we want to pray for the families, Lord. For the men to step up and take their proper role, as well as um, uh, the children and the women, Lord, we pray for them to, uh, the, the, those especially who are fatherless, don't have uh, husbands, we pray for them to be able to manage and to uh, get through uh, their own life and just help the men who should be taking responsibility to do that. And we pray for the Sunday assemblies, Lord, for them to be attended well, help the speakers and teachers to be uh, prepared, uh, help them to say something meaningful to the congregation so that the audience, when they leave, will have a deeper faith, they'll believe the scriptures, and more importantly, act on them. Thank you for Jesus. Forgive us, we pray, of our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you have any uh, comments, leave them in the comment section below. Had a little glitch there for a second. Uh, but leave your comments in the comment section below. Send your questions if you have any to timothy4.2.3 at gmail.com. You do not have to. I mean, I'll respect requests for anonymity. You just got to be specific about what your question is. So that's going to do it. Hope everybody has a great Saturday. We'll see you in the next video. I'm done. I am out. And uh, yeah, you know what time it is. I don't have to tell you, do I?